From Sydney, Australia, all the way to Portland, USA. Two misfits hang out after class to riff on the B-sides of professional life. These are your professional misfits. Hello friends, all the way from Sydney, Australia. I am your host, Christopher Sellers. And from Portland, Oregon, I'm Brody Ipox. And we are your professional misfits. And welcome to episode three of season two. And this is the infamous sexual harassment episode, Brody. So season two, as you know by now, folks, is is about relationships. So personal, professional, familial, and sort of everything in between. And the first five episodes, at least of this season, were dedicated to professional relationships and exploring this workspace. So it would be naive of us and not very misfit to dance around the topic of sexual harassment, which is a thing and it happens. So we're going to get into it today. I'll probably share a, a personal story of mine on, on my experience. But before we get into that, it's like, Brody, um, look, is it, have you ever been around it? I was going to say, has it ever happened to you? But, you know, <laughs> it may have, or have you ever been around it? Or what have you observed in, by ways of sexual harassment, like professionally in the workplace? Because it is fair to say that, you know, guys have a, a very different, there's a very different perspective for this on right. both sides of the fence. So I just wanted to get your take early on. Yeah, I mean, if if I'm being completely honest with you, I I am blessed to say that I have not directly been affected by it. I've yeah. been in a circumstance where it's uh it's present and it's and it's uncomfortable for all parties involved. Um but yeah, I'm lucky. I'm lucky as shit. Because I, you know, after talking with you and, you know, exploring some stuff on LinkedIn, it is apparent that this happens to guys as well. And almost, you know, not as often, I won't say as often, but enough that, it, you know, there's equal experience to be talked about. Hmm. And guys are scared shitless to do it, too. And for different reasons, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Different That's reasons, point. so. It's uh yeah I'm I I don't want to say excited you know what I mean because this isn't necessarily an exciting topic you know no what I, mean? but... I I know what you mean it's it's more of a we like we like with the best of intentions like taking the lid off you know those right. things that have been like stored away in the deep dark and we don't talk about and you know, the whole point of this whole podcast and sort of developing into decent human beings is you're going to have to talk about it at some point. Otherwise it sits in festers. Um, right. You, you know, or the world moves around you and, and you're like, holy shit, how did this happen? But I guess if we stick with what's familiar um, in your experience, look, has anyone ever been sexually harassed around you? Because it, it's, it's one, there's that thing of like, well, like if you're a good guy, then it's up to us good guys to keep all the bad guys in check. You know, this is, this is a sort of logic and, and I get it. Um, I think you overlook, people tend to overlook the fact that like good guys don't hang around other fuckwits, like good guys don't tolerate this shit. Right. Right. So it's, right. it's the lazy, weak, soft individuals that like allow any sort of this behavior to sort of pass, but so I'll stick with my original question. Like, have you ever been around it? Have you ever been in that sort of experience? Um, yeah. So there was, I mean, in all honesty, there's been a couple instances and right. I, I would say that, um, one of them was borderline and that's still in my eyes, sexual harassment, you know, like it, 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 even though it didn't have an, issue under hr or anything like that um can you give us some context and example yeah Just, yeah of course yeah. so yeah so uh, you know i was working for a agency that did tech support for microsoft when mm -hmm. xbox one first kind of uh, like launched and did their whole thing um that was fun and exciting and there's a bunch of people and young people in a space and you're in cubicles right next to each other and there was one gal in particular that um just didn't fit the mold i mean we're talking microsoft and xbox here so like it, where the 
women that were there, not to say that they weren't attractive in some sense, but they were just different. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? It's just different. And that's the crowd that was there. Uh, This chick, uh, yeah, just kind of looks like she came from money almost, you know, and just had that air about her. And uh, I don't want to say vain because I didn't know her very well, but, you know, definitely cared about her fucking looks. You know, like that that kind of chick. And, um, yeah, there was like running jokes that would happen with like upper management about her looks and, uh, and, uh, you know, things would be said when she was walking by and, you know, there was to one her or just like about her and that sort of bro culture. Both. Thing. Both. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Both. And, um, then there was, you know, one instance where we were all in a kind of group meeting and one of the, um, I don't, I'm not sure if he was management or just leadership at the time, but he actually stopped the meeting to point out how good she looked today. Okay. In front of, this is in front of like fucking 20 people did at least. And it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking massively uncomfortable for everybody. Yeah. Involved I'm, it's like, I'm uncomfortable. Okay, is I'm something looking uncomfortable here? Right yeah, yeah. Or like, are you just creepy and fucking <laughs> yeah. weird? Yeah, like right. I'm not, sh- and you're my boss. Like, so like if you're fucking creepy and weird, like what the fuck, you know? And like, again, you you're right and and i'll be honest with you that's kind of one thing where i if i'm looking back at the situation talking about it with you now i never said shit i never Mm -hmm. said shit and i knew that shit was annoying and i knew that shit wasn't you know had to be uncomfortable for her he's trying to make a fucking wage here and someone's over here talking about your fucking hair or your ass or your eyes or whatever the fuck it is i'm not here for you to look at yeah yeah you know what i mean i do and 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 then again that whole leadership thing i think there was a dynamic there that probably she had to deal with more than anybody else and mm. that was the first look in everybody got that where leadership was directly you know making like complicit passes. in it yeah yeah, yeah 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 fucking passes and and then again too where i think the thing that struck me in that situation was again it's leadership so if they're doing it what are you saying for every fucking other person yeah, in the organization? Totally. It's cool. Num- let's, num- let's... Number one, like you should know better, you know, it, even professionally, like set a fucking standard, you yeah. know? Um, and, and two, yeah, implicitly it gives permission and consent for everyone else. Like, Oh, it's okay. Yep. You know? And that's, that's and, and, and that's the most uncomfortable piece about it. Like you said, the good guys can't sit with that. It's like, no, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to be one of those guys that's just sitting here making somebody uncomfortable for fucking eight hours a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that shit sits weird with me and so, to be right with a bunch of guys that can is just as bad. You know what I mean? It's just as fucking bad. So yeah. I'll be honest with you. I, that that and for more than just this situation that whole dynamic that job in particular was just not a good fit for me so Mm -hmm. i was in one of the worst mental places of my life bro i had no and and again dynamics like that and almost high school-esque you know it got very clicky too in that environment where you know the you'd obviously see the people that were into that kind of fucking gross shit or like just being there to be there or trying to fucking taunt the title kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They all started to grab their clicks and their little groups and that kind of stuff. So I just honestly head down most of the time and yeah, right. Circle back. I feel guilty. I should have said some shit. Hey, fucking, uh, I'll use a different name. Hey, fucking back off Janet. Nobody yeah, fucking yeah, gives yeah. a shit. She's a, she's a great gal, but nobody fucking cares. And if, if, and if you can come in it that way, right. You know what I mean? Where we're not, we're not taking anything away from her. This Mm -hmm, isn't to mm -hmm. hurt her. This isn't to hurt anybody else. Mm -hmm. It's just that, Hey, I've got fucking work to do. I've got fucking work to do in all retrospect, unless fucking Janet is directly related to one of the projects I'm on. She matters a little and I don't want to fucking hear about her. (laughs) I mean, and I I didn't, and I didn't look it's yeah. So I was thinking about it before we came on and it is 
let's be clear, like neither one of us nor anyone listening at home is a white knight. And I'm thinking to myself, like one of the questions I was going to ask, have you ever been around it? And like, have you ever caused it, for instance? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, like, I don't, I don't think so. And I hope not, but I can testify that at some point in my adolescence, I was the fucking douchebag in the car going, Hey babe, nice tits <laughs> for real. Yeah. 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 Right yeah. now, just cause like you want to be cool. You want to hang out. It doesn't matter what the explanation was. I've done that. Yeah. And so at least we've hopefully grown and matured enough to go fucking douche. Not cool. <laughs> no one's impressed. Like what the yeah. fuck, you know? Um, and I guess, yeah, my, and so getting into my twenties, at least I was never, no. And, and I'm even, <sighs> Anyway, I, I don't, I don't think so. And I hope not, but like, have I been around it? Oh, for sure. Like you work in, you work in hospo. It's, um, it's interesting. Cause I was chatting to two of the girls yesterday who work at one of my local CAFs and said, have you had this sort of experience? And one of them's got, I've got a lot to say about this actually, and sort of rambles it out and just how she's treated different because she's a girl purely. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of, a lot, a lot of hospitality is a boys club. And so girls are to run the register or run the floor, but you can't make coffee, you know, what? And so if a guy, a new guy comes in, then he's going to get all the shifts and someone else is you know, a girl that's been there for three years or something, get her shifts cut. Like not at the place that she's at now. She's saying it's quite a, it's quite a good balance. Mm -hmm. Um, but, <laughs> and it's funny because she's at least 10 years younger than me. And I can obviously see directly into the world that she's talking about because I've been there and I've worked that, yep. you know, um, not like you were describing with Microsoft, never at super bro cultures, because I am never going to, I am never going to fit in with a super bro culture. And that's sort of the, the bizarre flip side is like, if you're, if you're a guy, if you're a straight guy who isn't going to sit there and go, man, I'd fuck Janet and go, like, shut the fuck up. Like, she's not interested in you. Let her do a fucking job. It's like, what's wrong? You a faggot? That's that's the flip, right? So if right. you don't if you right. don't buy in to this shit, then then you must be gay or just not not down with the rest of it. So it's it's in groups, right? Mm -hmm. In that sort of pack. Like I don't know. I can't testify to it so much in corporate culture because it's not really been my experience, unless I've been subject to it. But that's something we'll get to later. But when it comes to, I hope. I don't think so. And I hope not that I don't ever, I flirted with girls. Like we talked about once, have you ever had a working relationship? No. So that sort of rules out, you know, inappropriately flirting with anyone that I, I, I worked with in any sort of professional capacity. Um, no. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I love how you're phrasing that. Like I, I, if, if, cause I've, I've worked with women, I've, I've worked with women and I yep. don't, I, 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 can't say for 100% sure. I really hope not. And I'm not that guy. You know what I mean? So I, in all honesty, I don't think I have. I don't think I've been the cause of it either. But, mm -hmm. it, you know, just to, you know, fall back on, you know, the white knight thing to, you don't have to be a white knight, you know, but I think there's a lot of things in context that I probably could have done. And it's, and it's weird to, look at it in the way that you're saying because i wonder if that's what it was for me i didn't want to be called a faggot i didn't want to be called a, a, i didn't want to be right. a douche you know what i mean like i to all of them you know what i mean like i and i i, yeah. I really don't know and, and and it was weird like i said i was it's such a challenging point in my life with mental health stuff that it was like something like that probably would have cracked me you know what i mean having contention right. against me and it's like bro that's a hard fucking spot to place people as well i and i'm not i'm not saying woe is me mm. she had it fucking way worse i'm just saying that's it's an interesting look where you're like damn i'm fucking damned if i do damned if i don't and it's gonna fucking affect me either fucking way sure and uh, uh, but uh, i suppose we we surely we'd both agree that the latter is still the better option to take now, now that we're adults, you know, now that we are adults and have autonomy, even if you're in, well, I would like to think, even if I was in the gig and three or four of the lads were standing around going, Janet is so fine. Like I would wreck that on a weekend. I just go, dude, 
you know, go home to your Wrong wife. Wrong fucking place. Wrong yeah. fucking place. <laughs> Right, and and it's and then normally and then I would. I'd have no problem that's, too. That, that's the other thing as well. Like the, the, the right, it's 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 and then normally the most cringy motherfuckers is like you're <laughs> unhappily married with two kids. Like go home to your fucking wife. You're fat. You're out of shape. You've got nothing she wants. You know, 100%. but you're sitting here jerking off with your boyfriends, Dude, going it, going like shit. It's so fine, man. I would wreck that if I was ten years younger. You go, and she still wouldn't want you. It's like, so fucking you know, funny, too, because this girl had to be fucking 18 to 20, maybe. And that guy in leadership, <sighs> fucking, dude, I, I I would not be surprised if he was fucking pushing 55. Like, I'm, I'm so. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Like, and again, same fucking context. She, you, pro- you probably have a wife at home. You probably you probably have grandchildren at this point. You probably got part. kids that are older than her. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, yeah, yeah. you probably have fucking kids that are older than the girl that you're putting in that fucking situation. I so yeah yeah yeah. I, it's it's weird. It's funny because it's funny when you started mentioning the outfits, like because the way she dressed or like took care of her appearance or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely mm-hmm. that's definitely a a a. A bias that affects women differently to men. And again, I'll qualify it. Not that it doesn't exist for men. I'm being very fucking clear as the best dressed straight boy in Sydney. Um, <laughs> because I remember we, yeah. I, the, the example I'll give by comparison, you know, there's a, there's a running joke. Most men can't dress. They've got no sense of style. And that's, you know, compound for Australian men. So if you've got someone like me who puts himself together or professionally, well, like what? Well, hold on. Why? 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 Why I, is it compounded for Australia? Oh, logic. What is, oh, also, what is, also what is the or, outfit that you're referencing? That's or, or, or climate? Because we've got a fairly temperate <laughs> climate, so you could okay. wear you could wear shorts all year round. You know, um, I think we're one of the few nations in the world where the police force wears shorts in summer. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, there you I go. Don't agree with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> For instance, right? Yeah. But they, we seem to get a bad rap. So you've got someone like me who obviously wears fancy hats, will wear a three-piece to the office, like has some style, it's, is eclectic and everything. I'm I'm aware of it. I like to dress well on occasion. Um, the running joke is I'll over, overdress for my own funeral. So we'll, we'll see. But I remember I was working for a tech startup for a bit. We're in a co-working space. And... Um, uh, we, it got to the end of whatever we were doing there. We we're moving into a permanent residence. And so I was finalizing with the, the girls who run the co-working space, like, what do we need to do? Da, 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 and all the rest of it. And she's like, oh, you're leaving. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going, she's like, oh, I'm going to miss your fancy outfits. I'm like, okay. And it was sort of, sort of flirty, but, but not, and, and it wasn't at all, um, uh, it wasn't all, any at all untoward, but it was, it was like men. I don't know. Well dressed men can, I guess, be either appreciated or assumed gay. Those are those mm, are the two, mm, mm. right? Okay. And, and, can I can I can I ask you this? Yeah. Can I qualify that statement? Is when it when it is a a st- god damn that's so stupid about someone. <laughs> anyways but when it is the situation where someone's making assumptions about your fucking sexuality yeah does is it is it from women or men or is it from both both both, both. okay okay uh, funnily enough okay oh so this recently <laughs> happened only a few days ago i was again in this in the same cafe i was talking about with the two girls there's a guy mm-hmm. that works in, he's kind of oh, wait a second. but uh tall dude <laughs> No, tall dude always wears a caps, like like a lot of tats and like traditional tats. So he's got he's got that vibe, you know what I mean? And he's a good looking guy, like tall, good looking guy, whatever. And I was sort of in a down mood, uh, because I oh that's right, I'd stop seeing, you know, mm-hmm. right, you know what it was. So basically, folks, I was someone I was casually seeing and I decided to call an end to it. And I said to Brody, like, no, oh, now I'm lonely because I don't have anything going on and I'm trying to be mature. Anyway. <laughs> and so I go to this cafe and I'm kind of in a funky mood. And um, Judy, who's Japanese, and she's like, you know, like, are you okay? What's going on? I'm like, oh, mama, there. I'm like, mm, kind of average. It's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, no, girls. And this guy is like, girls? Because he'd assumed for months that I must have been gay. Fuck you. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> but okay. You know, and that's and that's and that's one of those things. And there's been other times where I've worn something, you know, 
just nice and fancy. And I've gone to Newtown, which is a very alternative suburb in, in Sydney. And I'd walk, you know, and super gay, super alternative, all the, no problem with it. But then, you know, you've got the, you've got the older Queens walking past and going, love this. I love this outfit. And I'm like, thanks babe. Like I, mm -hmm. I wanted to dress pretty and I'm getting a bit of, thank you. You know, so it, it comes and goes. Now I've never, this is what's interesting. I've never I felt weird for a half a second though, because I've, I've put myself in the position where I've definitely looked at someone and been like, yeah, he's gay as fucking shit. He's gay. He's gay. Right. And it's not that it affects me one way or the other. If you're gay, all the power to you. I love you. But it, you know, I'm just saying just I would immediate never, assumption. I, I would never, right. But even in that immediate assumption, I would never fucking verbalize it for that human being. Right. Okay. Interesting. You know what I mean? I'm never. Yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> why, why does it? Why does my assumption of your sexuality matter? What yeah. the fuck does it actually play a part into anything? I mean, actually. So, but I, I've never in in my experience, I've never. If I've been assumed gay by men, it's never been a, in a. It's never been derogatory. It's never been unhanded. They've never gone, "Hey, you want to suck my dick?" It's never been crass. Nothing okay. like that. Okay. All of my negative sexual harassment experiences have all been by women and they've tended to be extraordinarily vindictive. Um, for for this situation? For um, this kind, for, kind for this of? conversation. For like yeah, 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 specifically, and in a professional context. So I guess we'll, we'll get into it in, in a yeah. in a second. I'm trying to imagine what I, uh yeah. So appearances, that's right. So for mm -hmm. men, a well dressed mm -hmm. man generally. Um, unless you're, unless you're European, but even then that's a joke. Like if you're Europe, if, if you, if a, if a European guy comes to like the States or Australia and he, you know, styled like Italian summer wear or whatever, you're like, well, oh, he's European. Which, uh, he, he's European or he's going to a fucking business meeting. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but the, we don't, it's a very, very, very different assumption. If it's a woman, a well-dressed put together woman, like, you know, she's doing it for someone it's you know it's of a sexual nature it huh. it well it lends itself to a whole bunch of other things than it necessarily does do for men which is mm -hmm. which is which is just either side of the fence is interesting to observe it is you know so like your friend your friend janet coming to work at microsoft like who puts herself together well is gonna go everyone's gonna stop the meeting to say janet you're looking particularly vibrant this morning I can imagine that's what this fucker said, as opposed to me sitting in the boardroom. No one's going to stop the room and say, well, they'll stop and say, hey, Chris, nice hat, but to take the piss, not as a compliment. You know what I mean? Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> well, look, I, I, I don't know if you're ready to jump into it yet, but I mean, it gets me curious. I, 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 I'd say that in my experience, most of the negative or uncomfortable situations around sexual harassment have been men causing it to women. But then, you know, you and I have talked a little bit precursor to know that, you know, that situation. And as far as I understand, it was a big effect. You know what I mean? It, it was. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll lead. I'll lead with two baby appetizers before we get to the big one. <clears throat> okay, there was, please. there was, and there was, there's two baby appetizers where I was working contract, um, working contract with a state government department and both times it was someone who worked for the organization, a female who worked for the organization. There was the first time, the first time was, uh, Friday night, you know, Friday night drinks, you know, end of the week, whatever. And it's not. It's not so often done that contractors mix with, um, you know, in-house right. staff because, because it causes problems and it's a bit like oil and water and whatever, but we all seem to get along and that was fine. And this is when I, I had my girlfriend at the time. So I've been with her for years. Everyone knew it. It was cool. Um, I'm not, sh I don't think she was there for this cause we weren't contracted on the same day, but whatever. So I decided, Hey, I'll hang out for a bit and I'll be social and whatever. Um, one of it, you know, again, we'll call it Janet nature. Um, got a bit tipsy, decided to tell me like how, how much she loves my outfits and, and like really cute. And, you know, does, does your girl appreciate it and, and, and all this sort of stuff. And I'm trying to be nice. And she's obviously had, you know, one too many wines. Um, and I kind of got the picture and she was sort of like, ah, oh, 
she's doing that thing where she's had too many drinks and she's like, oh, I should really, I should really get a cab home, you know, and just like, <laughs> For like anybody hanging on to you. Like I should really do this right now. I wish you could see Chris. So <laughs> find us on YouTube when this comes out. <laughs> Everyone on everyone on Patreon, I get to watch. But like, it's like I really, I'm like standing directly next to you, not like not picking up her bag, not whatever. It's like I really should be getting home, and you know, it's only, it's only like a ten minute cab, but I don't want to walk, and the, you know, dropping all the hints under the sun. And by the, I, I, you know, I just went, all right, well, um, if you're gonna head, like, I'm gonna head home too, and like, have a great night, and, and that was that. I was out. So I and I. So I thought I'd I thought I'd done the you know, done the right thing and said you know I've not embarrassed you in any way I've just you know cut my losses I'm out go home to my partner and go fucking Janet was hammered and she had a good old giggle it's like you should have gone home with her and told me all about it I'm like yeah okay right um, anyway come to come to work the cool partner next... cool partner yeah she was she was <laughs> um, come to work the next week and. A lot of, a lot of, there was, you know, the contractors in a separate room and stuff in another room, but there was like a lot of, I don't know, giggling and whispers and this sort of shit. Yeah. And, and, and basically to cut a long story short, because Janet had been hammered and must have taken, must have remembered that and taken some offense that I'd gone home and not gone home with her, then I must be gay. Uh, and then my, that my partner, was like, she must be. <sighs> No, I like to feel like that kind of a level of entitlement. Like no, it. yeah, no, 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 no. She wasn't okay. those. She wasn't a. She wasn't a wasp. So she wasn't. Uh, <laughs> okay. You know. Um, yeah. And again, like middle aged. Uh, I don't know Christ. if she was a single mother or whatever, but just you know, Vindictive because was the right word. Yeah. Right. So just sort of spread spread the rumor that it, like it's it's a weird. Chris is weird, and it's a weird relationship because and there's something there must be something going on with his partner and like blah 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 blah. And and again, this is if you oh, talk about drag her into that shit, like fuck you. Like, well, that's what? that's what happens when gossip meets logic, right? <laughs> um, and and to sort of take up the initial argument of um, where's all the good men to protect us, like, I sort of posted on LinkedIn and said, well, where's the good women? Mm. Because this was it's a it was bullshit mm. gossip that mm. would have gone nowhere had someone said to Janet like he's in a relationship, he's been with someone for five years. Why the fuck would he be interested in you? Who's you know? Yeah, and why does the denial make him gay? Frumpy, frumpy fuck? single mother. But and now okay, Janet, <laughs> you know. But I'm sorry, dude. I'm just ima right. I'm just imagining middle aged woman, fucking two piece fucking suit, yeah, too many pinot noirs, <laughs> yeah, you know. just fucking thinking that she's the fucking queen shit. <sighs> wow. Yeah. So that. It, so, but then so to that, take it there, and you said she was an HR. Yeah. Oh fuck. So where do you go? <laughs> well, that's it. And so that's, this is part of the delicate. Like, now you start to understand. This is the delicate thing. Like you're. You're basically in charge of all of our contracts because at the time I was contracted through an agency. Um, HR yeah, and so, an HR. You know, so that that'll do for appetizers, I think. But the main the main one was I, when I was actually hired. So this is a completely different story. But I was uh, I was working for a tech startup for about two years, and for the sake of context and transparency, I met this chick. Well, like we'll call we'll call her Lynn. There you go. Um, <laughs> met Lynn, casual thing. I already don't. Um, like seeing each other for a couple of weeks, and even she had feelings, and I made it very very clear. It's like no, casual only, never gonna date you. Mm -hmm. Oh, but but but, um, you can come go do whatever you want, but this is the way. Oh, okay, so she seemed to accept it. Um, I was sort of unhappy with the tech startup that I was at because for reasons and Lynn, um, ran a media production company and she knew of me and my skill sets and sort of what I'd done and whatever. And she's like, how about you come work for me? Well, more than like, I'll, she's like, she, she was better at the admin and sort of logistics. So I'll take care of that. You be creative director to do all the big visionary stuff. <clears throat> so on paper, it's a really, it's a really suitable partnership. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I wasn't that fucking naive in the beginning. I'm like, how, Look. how long was the uh, 
for, for, for friendship before the maybe offer. like a maybe like a month or, uh more than a month month or two okay let's say okay right okay um but yeah this is the point like i wasn't that naive to just go yes and like drop everything i'm going yeah look um <laughs> give me give me a contract like make an offer give me a contract put it in writing you know all all the shit um then we'll talk mm -hmm. uh and then she did like i think about a week within a week like she's come back and like here's here's the thing, here's the offer, here's what I can provide you, and here's roles and responsibilities. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and this casual thing was kind of going nowhere. So again, before, I was a very good boy, before I signed, I said, look, if, if we go ahead, we go ahead with this, this casual thing can't continue. <laughs> like, it's just not it's not mm -hmm. going to work. Mm -hmm. It's going to cause a whole bunch of problems, especially as we're just trying to find our way in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. So she agreed to that. So it looked good. It looked golden. We seem to be handling it like adults. So be it. <clears throat> Resigned from the startup, took a week off, went down to Melbourne, chilled out, came back, signed, ready to work. <laughs> Uh, so the first, when her first initiative is we should take a company trip to Thailand. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> what in the fuck? How many people Straight are in up. the company? Straight up. Yeah. Right. Straight up. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I've got a, you know, I've got a whole bunch of friends who are over there. They're all digital nomads, you know, similar sort of space and, and creators. And this is how, this is how I, this is how I work. Like I take myself away for like a week or two and, and get a whole stuff, bunch of stuff done and come back and execute on projects. And, um, uh, so look like, yeah, I, I said, yes, you know, the company basically paid for it. Um, and so we go to Thailand for two weeks. So, you know, got to experience Chiang Mai and that was great and everything. She did no fucking work. And I'm the one going, well, are we going to record this video series while we're in Chiang Mai? Like we said, we were going to do and like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, so anyway, so that was a, in hindsight, that's a giant <clears throat> red flag. Like your first company mm -hmm. initiative is like, I'm, I'm going to take you away somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, to cut a long story short, it was and all the time while we're in Thailand and then forever ongoing is why can't we get back what we had? You know, so it sort of starts there. And what I realized within the first few weeks is baby's tried to buy herself a boyfriend. Um, right. This isn't really going to fly. And I, I <laughs> thought you'd be adult about it. So, okay. So I was like, no, um, now, and this went on for, for months of this, of this like carrot and stick and forth. Bri yeah, bribery right. of, of, oh, but you know, we'd be great together because, and like, oh, then we're going down here. And, and this because is what we were I have to offer. Right. Cause we were traveling, we were doing things. She was sort of demonstrating like our life could be amazing and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, great. I'll still have two rooms. Thank you. Um, so baby was trying to buy herself a boyfriend. Then uh, I guess about three, four months in when she realized I can't be bought and this isn't going to work, gets really fucking vindictive. So it's like, cool. I'm now a glorified secretary. You're not going to handle any contracts. You're not going to handle any projects. You're not going to handle like whatever, and, you know, I'm going to oversee everything. You're going to run everything through me. And um, so I'm creative director on paper, but <laughs> And you're paying me a stupid wage to sit here and, you know, go through zero, like, all right. Um, and it, it, so it was getting to the six months, you know, sort of probationary period of the contract. And I basically decided I was going to fucking opt out anyway. And if there was a few projects left, then maybe, maybe I could step out diplomatically and, you know, be contracted back forever, whatever it is that you wanted to do, because it was getting to, this was just before COVID as well. So it was getting to a point where, um, you know, some projects have been done or whatever, but you were, you were starting to owe me wages. So on top of this bullshit, on top of, 
all this other stuff. Like you were also starting to have wages and certain commissions on projects and everything else. Yeah, yeah, Brody. <laughs> Brody's got a very concerned look on his face. So now, so then I've, and so, but this is, I guess, while this is the story, the, 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 the whole time this is going on, and because she was, yeah, everyone else regarded, like, loved Lynn. She was so lovely, you know, girl next door, all this sort of shit. Had they seen the messages that she was sending me? If, if, this, if the roles were reversed, if, you know, if I was Janet and she was middle management, it's Weinstein, it's sexual harassment, it's me too, it's fucking over. But because and it's... And I right. mean, can I touch no on contest. this for a second? Because I feel like the thing that like instantly hits me, and again, this has not happened to me. This is not, I'm not saying I've experienced this. I'm only listening to Chris share his story. And for you listeners, this is actually the first time I'm hearing this as well. He has mm. saved this for <laughs> weeks, for episode you, you know, for episode three. And um, look, the thing is like that, that's, there's just a level of uh, pressure. Or, or you know and, and maybe even it's just uncomfortability that that just sits so weird with me that because you know you're doing that to someone i fucking i don't care who you are you know you're doing it to someone and well, even that's if you're I... okay with the results and that being someone i mean that's that did it what i'm getting at did it affect your mental health I was I was about to lead into that. Like this is the story. I'm telling you this. I'm recounting the events of what happened while all of this is going on. You know, like it's sort of it's let's say it's Thursday or Friday night, and I'm at home or I'm out with friends or something. I might get a text from her at like eight or nine o'clock at night saying, "Oh, hey, I'm just like here or wherever. Do you want to hang out?" Which you know, if your friends would be okay, and or even like in this industry, you know, catching up impromptu or late night to work on something isn't unheard of but it's it was kind of like oh hey you know i can take you to dinner or like oh hey i can bring something around or hey i can just like can i sleep at yours tonight and it it was just constant and so when i've sort of drawn those boundaries and i'm like no and are you sure you sure you sure and so again it's like it's it's sweet and nice and whatever else until it's not and then it's like um yeah don't worry about misfits i'm going to take that over Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Ne next right. morning, right? Yeah. Don't worry about Misfits. I'm going to take that over. I'm like, okay, what should I work on? She's like, ah, oh, I don't know. And like, would find something. Like, okay. And a and bullshit so, something. Not totally bullshit something. Totally bullshit. So it was this sort. Of, and then, you know, the in the next few days, it'd be back to you, like, hey, um, can we get together and, you know, do this? And like, it, you know, so it was this, it, this sort of back and forth. Uh, and like, did you, did she know that she was doing it and did she think it was unreasonable? I, I really actually couldn't say because she was a lot of times in her own little world and obviously unbelievably entitled to think that this is the way it's going to be and you'll just be okay with it. Um, and, and, and besides, I'm paying you or I'm not, so you're going to have to do what I say anyway. But right? I mean, that's the question that we all ask, right? Like, was she was she aware? Was he aware? Were they aware? Well, like, I like I made it I made it clear, um, especially towards the within towards the end. I remember I was in Bali because I took myself away for two weeks to start writing the book, and it was over Christmas. It was the Christmas before COVID. Took myself away. I mean, in Indonesia, she's wherever she is as well. Um, and she's just sending me like sext after sext after sext. Like, do you remember this and remember that? And that was amazing and da da da. And I can't believe it. And no one else. And I'm like, right. I'm just like, look, we're friends and all, but like I've said no, and this really isn't cool. Like, and th and this is this is when you know things are fucked because even as a guy, I'm thinking to myself, I have to screenshot these messages. Oh, for anyone to remotely. Be Believe right because months from now <clears throat> no one's gonna believe me or if i'm trying to say you know this is actually what was said and what was done and 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 everything else no one's gonna buy this and and that's it to, to, to sort of put it in context it's kind of like brody if, if you sent me a message and i'm like i'm gonna have to screenshot this for later it was it was fucked right so we what brought it to a head funnily enough is we got through a certain event, did a conference, um, 
after that and she was playing the same games as she normally was just like here's admin work and whatever and why aren't you bringing in more sales and it's like because my job isn't sales so best of luck with that uh is she took she took credit for a project that had absolutely fucking nothing to do with her and funnily enough that was the final straw not her behavior not oh by this stage she owed me circa 10 grand oh. um oh, right this- right and Lynn yeah, sounds yeah. awful. <laughs> it, it, it it was. It, it really was. And Fuck. and of course, and you asked it to fuck with my mental health. Like the whole time, I'm thinking like this. I didn't really have anyone to talk to her about it. Like this is sexual harassment, right? Like I I like I've come to terms with it now, and so I can I can post about it and talk about it and discuss the dynamics. But at the time, I'd never. Sure, I'd been hit on with people I didn't like. I'd have to deal with all this other shit, but I'd never, it had never been something like this where it was consistent. It was just casually, <sighs> you know, and, I just and mean professionally like, related. Even if, even if, like, look, we take the professional out of it, okay? There, there is no contract. You guys didn't work together. She didn't fucking dangle and use all this shit as fucking motivation or it you know for her desires but it, it let's just say none of that's there it's just, you guys are just friends okay you had the relationship that you had it's consensual it's it, it we understand what it is and then you cut it off right and let's say she continues that behavior on without it, it, you know circumstance that shit's fucking creepy and no one would fucking bat an eyelash. No one would say, oh, fuck, dude, you're totally right. This is fucking insane that someone would continue this. And then again, you add in fucking emotional, financial, and fucking physical leverage. Like, that's mm. what in the fuck, dude? You know, like, and my mind goes to, and, and it's funny because I'm like, okay, if this was me and I had to talk about this, like, my mind goes to two where I think, all, all, all my buddies would be like, you fucking asked for it. And it's like, yeah, dude, wow. no, I, dude, no the fuck I didn't. No the fuck I didn't. Well, this if, is... If anything, I, mo- I'm, I most explicitly said I did not ask for it. You know, like that's... Well, that's this... And this is what I... I'll finish up this story and that's what I really want to get into. So basically, yeah, she took credit for this whole bunch of shit that <laughs> shit she didn't do. And that was enough to set off little artist Chris. And I've got, nah, fuck it. So I said, look, um, I'm, I've already kind of resigned. I was only working contract. Like I'm, I'm, I'm done here. And she's like, I think she gave some sort of quippy response, but like, okay, yeah, like whatever. And within minutes I was locked out of every account on the, on the mm-hmm. platform, even for projects I was working on, even for, you know, so I had you know, a few minutes to reach out to some clients who I was actually friends with and said, again, politely, greatest respect. I'm no longer working with the company. I think Lynn's taking these things over. Um, if you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them, but otherwise I might have to direct you. And like, if you need anything else, you know, all the best. Um, and this is, so this is, so now we're at the end point. I was like, what do we do? And this is again one of the one of those funny legal things is like if I broke into your house and I stole ten grand, um, I'd be arrested and I'm a criminal. If you're an employer but you've refused to pay me wages to the sum total of ten grand, well, you're not a criminal. You've got to go around about it a different way. Mm-hmm. Like wage mm-hmm. theft is a really fucking interesting thing. Anyway, oh yeah. So I had to, yeah, probably the same in the states. Oh yeah, I mean absolutely. And you get into you know the contract work and it you know w10s and things like the the tax sides of things like that the way that they're able to write off contractors there's no stipulation shit if they don't want a paper trail and aren't willing to sign a contract you don't fucking exist and yeah there's a lot of people that'll get into situations like that and then they're fucked they're fucked like you said yeah. for for five ten fifteen fucking grand they'll put on the line and work for these companies and then they'll go oh, yeah we can't pay you we can't pay it <laughs> They're right. not gonna pay you. And right, right, right. What can you do? What I mean, like actually, you know, you. So at least for the for the for the most part, I was employed, mm-hmm. and it was just for this one lot. Anyway, so I have to seek. That's right. And COVID had just hit now, so all live events and all the media stuff is absolutely shut down. So COVID season one, everything's in lockdown. Everyone's like, "What the fuck." Um, 
So I have to find a solicitor or someone who's going to represent me for this court because I've already sent her emails and to the accountant saying, by the way, you owe me X amount. I'm giving you seven days. Mm -hmm. um, and if, and this is, and I think before I did that, you have to weigh your soul on, am I going to press sexual harassment charges? Because this has forced me to quit a senior role at a media production company. Now this gets into exactly what you were talking about as a straight man who was sexually pursued by a five foot, nothing sweet girl next door. Am I really going to claim that she harassed me unwanted sexual advances to the point of me resigning, which is the absolute truth. But is that, what I'm going to say. And so then what does, what does that mean for me? What does that, you know, is this how I carry myself with women? At least I didn't self blame. Like, no, I've made it really fucking clear from the beginning. This was over and done. You seem to consent to that. So, you know, there's a very different standard to, like we said, like if this, if it was a woman in my position, one text and it's over. And I had pages of texts. Oh, right. Uh, and, ima and imagine vice versa again. Like if you were her, if you were pursuing her to those lengths, like that, no fucking shot. Unbelievable. Dude. You know, you'd be named, shamed, dragged in the street. Um, so, you know, and, 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 and of course, professionally, I can't talk about it can't talk to the clients that I've worked with exclusively for six months, can't talk to anyone in the business circles, can't discuss it with anyone, um, A, for confidentiality, and B, just to, like, sour one's reputation. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? So, Yeah, well, it's like you said, was, too. I mean, even open your mouth. You, you're waiting. You know, you are now at fucking mercy of someone's judgment of that. And, again, like you said, as a straight male <clears throat> i'm gonna take some heat i'm gonna take some heat You're, i'm gonna take some well heat. and that's and that's what i and so this is the sort of i guess the the if there's any topic for reflection or if there's any moral for reflection for the for the misfits at home it's like we'll consider consider that like is if 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 men if we can say like well men are prone to sexual sexual harassment too then ask yourself are they really because if, if your mate, your dad, your brother, your uncle, your son, your friend came to you and said, Jenny wanted my dick and I said no. And then like, like she, really, she really wanted it and I just said no. Like, does your opinion of them change? Like, just something for you to think about at home. Because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a no contest if a woman says, no, I don't want you. Like, it's, that's that. She has her right. She can, you know, can call her a bitch or whatever, but you know, she probably has self-respect, but does, mm -hmm. does a man have self-respect if he says no, or you know, don't all men want it any way they can get it. So, something to think about at home. I'll spare you. I'll spare you the, the long and tedious legal shit that came afterwards, but basically I ended up getting my money back, which was decent. Good. Um, and I, and I did, I did register the sexual harassment claim it's interesting because it goes through a very specific and national court in australia it doesn't go through yeah it doesn't go through like lower tier middle tier upper tier no it goes directly to the <clears throat> i think it's the court of human rights like in australia right it goes directly there okay. but it's it but it says they come back to you and say all right we're gonna give you a month so you've got a month to sort of mediate this amongst yourselves after a month that comes to us mm. you know so so I filed legal proceedings for, for both, uh, got my money back. And to cut a long story short, I, after I'd filed for sexual harassment and got my money back, I'm like, look, I, let's, I'll, I'll withdraw the claim. I'll let it go. Um, and, and mid COVID as well. So that was all this other shit that was sort of going on. So that was, that was that, but. I was, I was lucky <clears throat> and I'll say this for my family is that they were completely and absolutely supportive of all of it. There was, there was no judgment. There was no, I told you so's there was no, none of that. They were 
absolutely on board and you know what we, well, how can we support you and and are you okay and and all those sorts of things so it was sort of that time was it was a perfect storm like professionally in the world globally covid had just arrived no one knew what the fuck was going on um now i've lost my job now i'm living in sydney one of the most expensive cities in the world um trying to negotiate rent you know emotionally psychologically and financially having to calibrate you know whatever this mess was was going on so it's not to say the moral of this story folks is not to say that men are sexually harassed too i made a post about this on linkedin about two or three weeks ago the point is to say men are sexually harassed different to mm. women mm. Mm. and we touched a little bit of this on the last episode of where it's it's a surely sexual harassment is, is a power dynamic right it's right. really really similar to bullying it's like i want to use i want to assert some sort of dominance some kind of control some sort of authority like i want my behavior to impact you in a way to get what i want whatever that happens to be it's not even even in the case of you know dickhead manager or teens shouting from a car it's not it's not as literal as sexual harassment equals i want to bully you to you suck my dick that's not what it is but it's it's i will use these tactics to assert my authority or my presence or my personality on someone else um and I, and I t would tend to believe that this is a behavior of people who want to abuse their power or role more than it is indicative of men and women. That's my takeaway here. Well, that's my offering here. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah I, I don't know. Like I, I, I said, early in the episode i think the one thing for me that i hope the listeners can take away that this um this subject is often kept behind closed doors so if there's if there's someone that you know that you can even catch a whiff of that is experiencing this you know like chris said about his family be the people that are there be mm. the people that are there you know because these things are hard these things are hard and it, it obviously is a fucking damaging situation and you know if you can be the light in that do it and uh and also can... and also for any <clears throat> excuse me and also for any women out there like mm -hmm. undoubtedly there's as many women who identify and empathize with this story if not you've or you, you've gone through it yourself when fuck mm -hmm. i i felt ashamed like i personally felt ashamed and emasculated like am i as a man am i less than because i didn't just fuck her and get on with it you, you know even even though i right. really didn't want right. to um right and so it's and what, what was i gonna say that was the other thing it's like obviously i've posted enough now processed it enough now to like to joke about it and to talk about it and all these sorts of things what's interesting is i posted it on linkedin twice so once probably about it once when the Depp and the herd trial resolved mm, and there was that okay. conversation Okay. Right. Yeah. And that was the first time I really shared it. Cause I'm like, here's my experience with a similar sort of thing. Right. So it's, it's a complex issue. This isn't black and white. It's not men versus women. And like, oh, but sometimes men too. Like, it's not that it's, you know, it's something else. It's more complex. Let's be adults. Um, and so and I shared it for the second time, probably a few weeks ago, both times, what was fascinating was the amount of people in the comments who some women go, I've seen this, I've seen this happen. And, and, I, and, I, and, and of course it's not talked about like men are less likely to talk about it because there's more shame and stigma associated with that. Like to be the alpha dog is to have all the bitches, right? Not to pick and choose the ones you actually want. Um, <laughs> then in the, right. But then in, in the comment, in the, in the private messages, this is where I'd get guys saying this happened to me too. Ah, so they, again, so really similar to the doors. mental health thing. Yeah, they they won't, we won't openly say, hey, you know. But so it's really interesting. But again, it's it's, and why we wanted to have this. Brody actually made the call. Brody said, no, no, this deserves to be an episode. So let's make an. Okay, sure. Um, it's it happens. 
it happens to everyone across the board in corporate and in hospo and everything in between and no one talks about it no and so, look my my thing is like look it's kind of the mousetrap right the more we talk about it the more fuckers like there that are like that out there are identified or are easy to identify right and it again maybe not be the white knight here misfits because you know do do what's best for your situation and yourself as well but if you can right if you if this if there's any fucking shred of chivalry in you tell fucking tell 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 janet she's all right and she's got someone safe then tell those guys that are fucking assholes and can't keep their mouths shut bro wrong place wrong fucking time and yeah. maybe maybe those little subtle fucking differences can make it, you know a, a monumental change in the long term but uh and and it but and it does again like it's, mm. it always takes when that one person stands up suddenly the the silent majority stand up with them because they're like oh yeah well i know that's wrong too and you go yeah so sorry brad no one's buying you know just fucking shuffle back to your wife <laughs> yeah, it's go fucking home buddy go home <laughs> You know, fifty-five-year-old um, fucking crusty ball bag motherfucker hitting on eighteen-year-old <laughs> girls. Leave this shit out of here. Come on, cringy as hell. Cringy beyond, as hell. Beyond. <clears throat> yeah. So, so that's that's my story. That's my experience. I, it hasn't happened to me since. I don't think. Oh no. I mean, so this is part of what prompted the thing on LinkedIn as well. It's because occasionally, occasionally, I'll get dms from random women across the world saying you're just really attractive i thought i had to tell you um now i could if i could probably count these messages on one hand and it would be nothing compared to the scale of what certain other women you know on a professional network right receive right, right. you know and crass and whatever and i love you move to india or you know whatever um, so I would experience a fraction of what a lot of professional women, women would have to tolerate mm -hmm. and, you know, <laughs> fuck, there's no way for nice guys to mediate fucking idiots on the internet. Um, the least you could be is, is, is not be one. And yeah, and I, well, and I, 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 I do. I want to say this. Look, I don't it, get it. it. I've never, I've never got that. I've never got that behavior just briefly. Like I've never, I don't fucking understand. Anyway. So, I mean, there's dynamics, right? And we, we all, <laughs> social media is growing and evolving where, you know, we're starting to understand the psychology of certain things behind it. And, um, look, just stay the fuck out of her DMS. I, I mean, just stay the fuck out of her DMS. You don't know her. You don't know her. She, she's on LinkedIn. She's an attractive woman. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. Go it's, again. It's go home. <laughs> pretty simple. Yeah. It, it is, is pretty it simple. Is, it is that simple. And, you know, you said it earlier. Let's all be adults. I, I, I hate to, you know, simplify it that far, but it, for fuck's sakes, it seems like common sense. It's it, to me. <laughs> and maybe I'm just being an asshole, but it, it seems no, like it, common sense. It, it, it does, and I, I like for some reason part of my brain is you know this. I'm sure there's a certain school of people who just you know think that, well, I'm just complimenting someone, and that's a nice thing. And like, okay, yes, um, but they're you know if you obviously can't read the room because social cues are different for everyone. But <clears throat> I don't know. There's there's part of it is look. I'll in my defense, I'll say this is like my at least my guidelines and my boundaries were clear. Like I'd said, no, I haven't had it in writing <laughs> several times. Right. I know. And so <laughs> right. yeah, if, if someone, if someone compliments you and you're not attracted to them, like that's not harassment, but it's, you know, or if they're unaware of where the line is. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> but once you establish like there's the boundary, bro, like just, I'm not so cool with people, you know, saying this or doing that or whatever. And if they continue to do it, then of course they're a fuck with. You know, Amen. And of course, they need to be. Yeah. I agree right? with that. You're right, and that's, yeah, that's the thing. 
But uh, again, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to recant my statement. Misfits stay the fuck out of the DMs. <laughs> just, <laughs> just come on. Is there anything, <laughs> is there anything that we, we haven't, I know it's a, I know it's a, we've only seemed to have just scratched the surface, but is there anything that we haven't covered or anything that was on your list that you were, that you really wanted to talk about for today or? No, um, I'm I'm going to say this and put my hand up in the recording to clip this. I would love for you misfits to partake in this conversation. I think mm. that's the big first step, right? You, you know, Chris and I can be here and share our experiences, but the more that this is normalized, the like I said, the faster we catch the shit, the faster people have examples and references. And maybe you have a fucking couple white knights that can come from this because they have the information you know they if they don't and you're behind closed doors then you know it's only you that can help you and godspeed mm. but um yeah 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 I, it, well like said. you said scratch the surface this is this is a big conversation we want you guys to be a part of it we want it to be normalized and not the situation so you know what i mean but the ability to call on it I just I just remembered what prompted us making this an episode as well because so to wrap up as our final anecdote after I posted this story on LinkedIn uh had a female colleague from abroad message me about a week later and said hey I'm going through something similar at the moment because she's a single mom and she'd just been hired at a firm and the guy that hired her was kind of a friend and they used to have a casual thing, but she'd called it sim really similar story, called it off. Now she happens to be working with the guy. She can't just tell him to fuck off because, um, delicate situation, you know, and in certain, <laughs> uh, delicate situation can't, so can't do that. And, and he keeps asking her out like for dinner and, and all these sorts of things. And she's like, no, 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 no. And then she even did, pulled the classic. Well, I'm kind of seeing someone at the moment. Um, and he's like, well, we need to have a serious discussion. Uh, and so she messaged me at about that time, just before they were about to have this serious discussion. And she's like, fuck, like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And it's, it's really difficult and obviously taxing and affecting my work. So I was really humbled that she trusted me enough to open up about something like this. Cause we'd never met, we'd never talked. This was really her first reach out. Um, so we discussed it a little bit and what the, the tactic we kind of landed on was the, this guy was sexually harassing her, but like also played the nice guy. Like, look, I just, I want the best for you, you know, and we're friends and I've known each other for a long time and you know, this oh, sort of thing, but at the same time, that's just emotional right, manipulation right. at that point. Totally hundred percent. But he's like, and I just, you know, but, I think we should really talk about, you know, blah, 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 blah. So a really, a really useful tactic I landed on, which she was able to use was, um, well, you know, you say that you respect me. This is what I'm trying to do. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like you, if you, if you want to play the white knight, these are all the things you've said as a white knight. So is that what you want from me or isn't it? So you're holding them sort of accountable to their own word. Mm -hmm. Now, and at the time she's like, that's, oh fuck, that's great. Like I'm going to, I'm going to use that. And like, cool. Cause it's also a really useful tactic to use with weak people. Cause weak people will say whatever they can to keep you on side. And then when you call them out, it's like, well, you said this, is that what you mean or not? Oh, but, did, 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 did. right. So skip ahead to her going to dinner. And it actually, it seemed to all work out. This scene, this guy seemed to have a coming to God moment where he's like, I realized I've been a dickhead and like, you know, talking all of this out and hearing myself talk, I realized I've kind of been out of line and I'm really sorry. So this girl still ha had to have the patience to sit there across dinner and let this guy verbally diarrhea everything that he needed to, just so at the end of it, he could say, I'm a dick. And she could agree with him, <laughs> you know? So right. that's the final chestnut to this story, folks. Um, we'll wrap it up there before we start getting into all sorts of anecdotes and Brody's already itching to. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like you said, I think, I, I think, and I don't know how or where, and I got to be honest with you, Misfits, it probably won't be facilitated inside the podcast itself, but this is a, just to realize, you know, how 
much is uncovered in such a small amount of time leads you to believe there's so much more to be discussed mm -hmm. and uh yeah yeah so that's where i'm at i'm I'll, let's wrap up oh my god I let's wrap up L let's lynn wrap sucks up. lynn sucks she does she does she does and she's probably still out there somewhere and but don't worry i'll, I'll have the last laugh and we'll revisit um but before so, we go actually yeah. what, what would you do if lynn catches this episode and lynn fucking made a pass <laughs> Well, well, no chance. But the, the funniest thing was as well, like for as long as I was working with her, she was like, well, you don't know anything about business, Chris. And this is the way it's, it's done. You know, so would love, would love always to drop, like you've, you've, you don't know anything about business. You know how to run this. And, da, 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 da. and like, she thought she was some fucking media mogul. Uh, so in about, you know, let's say five or six months, let's revisit yep. this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, Anyway, moving on, moving on. So this was episode three. Thanks for being here, folks. And thanks for being a part of it. I think it's important. I think it's important. This is what we're about. We don't shy away from the heavy shit here. Episode four. Episode four is interesting because it's TBC. If you're part of the Professional Misfits LinkedIn or Facebook group, you would have seen the poll probably a few weeks ago where we have three topics. Mm -hmm. This is what we want you guys to vote on. And if you've seen the secret guest page on the Misfits website and you have to go through the groups to find it, <laughs> you can see the entire season two run list of the theme for the season, all the episodes that we're talking about, all the guests that we're having on board. And every fifth episode or so is to be voted on by you guys. So I don't know what we're talking about to next episode could be tomorrow i'm not or we might do it now i don't know anyway, don't know what we're talking about because the votes were tied when we last looked so we're gonna have one last ditch at this to see if anyone else has voted or brody and i will flip a coin <laughs> decide <laughs> on what we want to do but um yeah that's that's where it's at but do you have a do you have a preference i'm trying to remember I'm trying to, I'm going to try and pull it up. Right, You talk in the background while I pulled up the LinkedIn group to figure out what the three topics were. So yeah. no. do, do you remember? No, I, so sorry. I'm, I'm still stuck on Lynn. Um, <laughs> she just fucking <laughs> burst my bubble. Um, right. No, the, the one thing I do want to say to the misfits is, um, so the first to be considered was, um, it will be honest with you, a little messy. And uh, on my on my part, I had a lot going on. Um, but this is a conversation that we want to have with you guys. Like it, it really, truly is. It's not. Um, it's not an engagement tactic. It's not something that no, yeah, we, yeah. we, we want to know what you guys want to hear about. And um, we've found the space within the season to do that for you guys and stick to the theme. So please. Please vote. Please, you know, next time you see it, let us know what you think. And so uh, here's, I think Chris here's found potentially them. here's potentially what's on the menu. It's either going to be, you know, the debate of working from home or returning to the office, mm -hmm. which seems to be heating up again right yes. now. It went, mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It went lukewarm for a little bit, but now it's starting to spice up again. Um, option number two is criticism in the workplace. Like, can you give it and can you take it? Which is a really interesting topic. And uh, option three is what's your worst professional relationship? I think I've covered mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lynn's so on this, the board. <laughs> this option, Lynn at the moment takes the crown. So, uh, so that's almost redundant. So it's almost down to the first two. Is it going to be working from home or return to the office or a, a just episode about criticism? So if you're listening to episode three in real time, that's what we've got in store for you. If you're listening and watching this on Patreon, you're two weeks ahead of everyone. That's part of the sexy, delicious bonus features that we've got on Patreon is that you can get all the video recordings in HD two weeks before the episode goes live on Spotify and YouTube. Yeah. Brody, if people want to find you, where can they find you? Oh, come on. You guys know where to find me. It's at the pro misfits podcast.com website. Let's let's go. That's all my links. That's where I live. That's that's where I'm at. So humble. So humble. Correct. So yeah, <laughs> pro misfits podcast.com. Again, you can find us Patreon, Spotify, and YouTube all at 
professional misfits. If you want to join the conversation with us and vote on episodes, either Facebook or LinkedIn groups, professional misfits, we're super easy to find. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Chris. I've been Brody. And you stay classy, misfits. We'll see you on the next one.